Okay, I think it's now working. All right, we're finishing up this chapter 10. Right, and there's, this presentation is really qualitative. There's not a lot of quantitative work to be done here. And it's just uh, something you're going to have to read the remaining sections in the text, right? Starting on about page 602, right, through uh, 608, so right? pages 602 through 608. Just a general discussion of microwave devices, right? So the last thing we did, right, we talked about transistor amplifiers. So in this case, right, the transistor is represented by its scattering parameters, which are measured at some frequency for some particular type of transistor, right? And so our objective is to be able to, you know, quantitatively, our objective is to be able to design the input matching network and the output matching network. Right? So recall, recall the uh, objective of that, right? The input matching network is designed, the C and the L here in this particular example that Stu worked was chosen such a way so that at the design frequency, looking into the network, right, you see the conjugate of the reflection coefficient looking into the transistor in this direction. Right. And similarly here, right, the output matching uh, network is designed so that the reflection coefficient looking into this network with a characteristic with a Z-naught termination is the conjugate of the uh, reflection coefficient looking in the transistor from the output side. So we discussed all that and we, we did an example. So you need to be able to you know, design this uh, input and output network, right? The, the design is the same, same procedure at least, but uh, the reflection coefficient looking into the output into the input are different, and so that's why these elements are, are different, obviously. Okay, so that's, uh, that's kind of a review. So this uh, figure 10.46b is kind of a review of what we achieved last time. So this is done with a Smith chart, right? We can do, we can design these matching networks, input and output matching networks through uh, either lumped elements, right? Or alternatively through stubs or some combination of the two for that. Okay, so right, don't forget your Smith chart work and, and that's pretty important. Let's see if I turn the lamp on. Yeah, that may help a little bit. Okay, let's see. Maybe I'll turn this off. Yeah, I hit the freeze button. All right. Now, back online. Uh, right, so a couple of things, right? I, I, this is a little out of order based on Stu's presentation. Let's skip down here and try to stay in order of the text, right? So he's, he also shows an interesting circuit here. Here's a balanced amplifier, right? And so what is one of the advantages of a balanced amplifier? Well, you get a uh, doubling of the output power, right? And so we're going to use uh, right, a couple of couplers, 3dB couplers on the input and the output of this uh, balanced uh, amp, right? And so these little symbols here really represent uh, a system like what we just discussed where it's been optimized for gain, bandwidth, and noise, right? Don't forget, noise is also an issue. So this thing has the source and load matching networks already combined in here. So this whole thing, uh, the figure 1046B is all assumed to be incorporated by, the, by just the amplifier symbol as shown, okay? All right, so the input comes here, right? And and because it's a coupler and because we know the scattering representation, scattering matrix representation for the coupler, we know that the output for a 3dB coupler is, is 
split evenly between ports two and three, and there's a 90 degree phase shift between those, right? And uh, right, so so each of these amps in the two legs are driven with the same uh, size input signal, right? So V in is split evenly between ports two and three. And so any reflections that occur here, right, those reflections from uh, the amplifier in the upper chain and the amplifier in the lower chain, those are reflected and coupled back into port one, all right. But because of the round trip, the reflections at port one cancel one another from the reflections of, from, uh, from the two uh, amps in the upper and lower leg. Whereas over here at port four, right, the reflections because of the additional 90 degree phase shift add in phase. And so in that case, you need to terminate that signal into Z naught. So all of that reflected energy that comes out of port two and three and passes through the coupler and combines constructively at port four is uh, dissipated as heat in the in this resistor. Okay, so that's a neat little feature. And then the output of the of the amplifiers, right, are combined here, right, and then uh, any energy that goes over to this port, right, is terminated again in a characteristic impedance, Z naught. Okay, so, right, balanced amplifier, kind of an, an interesting, de uh, interesting design approach. And, right, moving on, right, we're just kind of checking the boxes in this chapter. And discussing these new ideas, uh, do go back through this receiver concept again, right? This is pretty important. So, you know, signal comes in, right, from the antenna. Typically, the antenna is receiving some desired signal. First order of business is a low noise amplifier, right? So again, what about a low noise amplifier? Its noise figure is important, right? How much noise the amplifier adds to the to the noise input, right? So that's an important factor, and its gain, right? And its uh, one dB uh, compression point as well. So in comes the the signal, right? And so then it passes through first order business as a bandpass filter. Well, why do you do that? Well, the noise uh, through the system, right, is reduced. You, you're trying to keep the signal-to-noise ratio low. So since the signal occurs only over a narrow range of frequencies, you want to put this filter in that passes only the signal, and the only noise that gets through the system is that that's in the band in the band pass region of the band pass filter, right? So the band pass filter. Uh, isolates the desired frequency from any other frequencies that, of energy that come through the antenna and that have been amplified by the low noise amplifier, right? and also reduces the amount of noise uh, added to the signal. Okay, so, so in this case, he, sh he shows the RF signal passing through the bandpass filter at 10 gig, right? so, you know, relatively high X-band amplifier, X-band being 8 to 12, so 10 gig is right in the middle of X-band. And so then what do you do? Well, you take this and you multiply this incoming signal by a local oscillator, right? So, right, and that's done in the mixer, right? So the mixer is a product, is a product device. In other words, it takes the RF input signal and multiplies it by the local oscillator. So what you're going to get at the output of this is some and difference frequencies and other frequencies. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Right? So this is, this is some, you can view it as some cosine 2 pi F sub C T, where F sub C is the carrier frequency. And this is, right, cosine 2 pi uh, F local oscillator, right, which is F sub C plus uh, 0.1 gig or 100 megahertz. So it's cosine A times cosine B, right, which is 1 A plus B 
plus one half cos and a minus b, right? So the a plus b, right, is the sum frequency out of the mixer. The a minus b is the difference frequency. So the difference between 10 gig and 10.1 gig is 0.1 gig or 100 megahertz, right? And so the IF is, is looking at a 100 megahertz input signal, right? So that's amplified and then pass through this bandpass filter, which selects uh, the 100 megahertz signal and rejects everything else. So that's the steps in a microwave receiver. So through the antenna, low, low noise amplifier, bandpass filter to pass only the desired frequency, right, the frequency with the information on it, then multiply that via a mixer and a local oscillator to bring that information content down to 100 megahertz, and then additional amplification and bandpass filtering ultimately uh, provides the modulation, the signal with the modulation on it, right? This, this signal at 100 megahertz has exactly the same information on it as the incoming signal at 10 gig, but it's now more, it's down, it's been down converted to a more manageable frequency, right? There's a circuit design down at this range of frequencies is much simpler than up here. Right? So you want to shift that down and operate it at the, uh, at the difference frequency, right? Okay, so, right, just a couple of ideas. Again, this is this system's this discussion is somewhat qualitative, so you, you want to read through Stu's presentation as well. So he talks about oscillators as well, right? Local oscillator. So you need an oscillator. Uh, there's different types: the gun and impact diode, and transistor uh, oscillators. So you can build these things in different ways. So you'd have to, you know, study the, the microwave design characteristics of op oscillators. And so how are they characterized? Obviously by output power, output frequency, and phase noise, right? So if you're trying to build a 10 gig oscillator, right, you want it to have a pure output of 10 gig. Well, if it's if it's got some bandwidth or if there's signal content around uh, if your signal content around 10 gig, then that's going to add to the phase noise. So in so many words, what this means is you want output at only the desired frequency. You don't want output uh, at frequencies other than that that is intended. Okay, so that's a characteristic of an oscillator. Right? Uh, what else, right? Mixers, right? A mixer is an important device in a in a receiver, right? And so it's a, essentially a product device, right? It's a nonlinear device and I put an input here and I put an input here and this thing will essentially multiply the incoming frequency and the uh, local oscillator frequency. So, so mixers, right? Here's your RF in and your local oscillator. So St Stu points out, right, that you're going to get the local oscillator minus the RF frequency at the output. And that's the that's the intermediate frequency. Just as before, right, this is 10.1, this is 10, and so the local oscillator minus the RF frequency, input frequency is 10.1 minus 10, which is 0.1, which is the 100 megahertz. So that's the desired output of this thing, of the mixer. But unfortunately, right, you get signal out at the RF frequency at the local oscillator frequency, at two times the RF frequency, at the local oscillator frequency plus the RF frequency, et cetera. So there's other spectral content in the output that is undesirable. So that's why you need to use this right, low-pass filter that, that basically blocks these other components out of your output. So that way, combination of the... Uh, of the mixer and low pass filter, right, produces uh, an output signal only at the intermediate frequency. Okay, okay so how do you characterize this thing, right? It's essentially uh, 
characterized from the isolation by competing the isolation, right, which is minus 10 log power uh, of the RF out over RF in, right? So RF frequency out over the RF frequency in. You want that to be small and uh, local oscillator out over lo uh, local oscillator uh, power out over lo local oscillator power in, and you want that to be small so that so you can typically right get an isolation of, of 10 to 25 dB. All right, so this is just a measure of how pure the output signal uh, is at the IF frequency. So he talks about, additionally in this chapter, right, he talks about microwave CAD, right, computer, computer codes that are appropriate for and useful for RF uh, circuitry design, whether it be an amplifier or a mixer or an oscillator. Right? And then he follows, uh, he terminates this chapter with a little interesting example on, on the RFID tag, right? So you'll want to read that. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Okay, so this is just a wrap up, right? This is just a qualitative discussion on some of the components of a microwave receiver. Right? Oscillators, mixers, filters we've discussed, low noise amplifiers, we talked about antennas. So essentially it's a survey class or an introductory class. So you're getting a feel for how to do some of these things and some specific experience in designing matching networks. Okay, so that, that uh, wraps up our, our chapter 10 uh, treatment. Right? So we're, uh, we're still deciding what to do. Uh, I'm sort of leaning toward, I guess at this stage, uh, not doing too much more. I'm, I'm just still vacillating on whether to, to pick up chapter nine or not. I'm going to have to come to a decision on that soon, and I'll inform you regarding that in the not distant future. So, right, you've got a homework on this. Uh, there's nothing out of this particular lecture on uh, no homework out of this particular lecture, but suffice it to say, I want you to read through the text on this and kind of familiarize yourself with some of these ideas. It's certainly worthwhile. You know, the general general survey course, so you need to be exposed to these concepts and and ponder them a little bit on your own. Okay. And then you've got a you've got a little homework that you're you're doing on a lumped uh, lumped element design for a uh, for a matching network. So you're working on that. And that'll uh, that may be the last homework assignment. We may pick up uh, homework assignments out of chapter nine, but we're we're running out of time a little bit. I wanted to wrap this thing up by the end of April. So we're sitting at the, the middle of April and I don't want to cram a lot of homework on you at the last minute and then have to transition into the final and not give you any time to study for the final. So again, I'm still thinking about these things. All right, well, you'll, you'll know soon enough what the final plan is here. i to wrap the class up, okay? As long as you're doing your homework and informing me that, that you've completed your homework and checked it against the solution and, and there's no discrepancies, then you're doing all you need to do for now. In addition to reading, obviously reading chapter 10 and finishing up that reading. All right, very good. All right, so we're done here for the day.